the undercarriage could shear off and the plane break up. Dark now, honey. 190, 185, a little slow, a little slow, Dave, let's blow what we want. Coming up on the glide slope. Okay, now well, let's try the gear. No one knew if the explosion had damaged the landing gear. I remember Laura saying to me that she didn't hear the landing gear go down. And it was loud, you know, the, it was still loud, and I didn't hear the landing gear go down. So that's another thought. Maybe they can't get the landing gear down. Maybe it's not down. Got you're down, we're clear to land, and everything's taken care of as far as we know. Two hundred. One ninety five. Half a dot high. Looking, looking good. One ninety two. One ninety five. Coming off on the power. One hundred feet. Fifty feet. Center of the trim. Center of the trim. Thirty. Ten. Zero. We're on. Gears holding. We landed. It felt fast. And that was my next concern, is that we weren't going to stop at the end of the runway, that we were just going to keep going. And all of a sudden, we were slowing down, slowing down. And I, I said, oh my god, we've landed. We're, we're uh, on, on ground. And the people started applauding. Probably the best landing I've ever made. When we uh, finally stopped on the runway, we deployed all 10 chutes, and the flight attendants evacuated all of passengers. It's amazing how fast everyone went. My understanding is like less than 45 seconds, 330 people were off the airplane. We were probably 20 feet off the ground, and I would have stepped out of the airplane without a slide. I, I wanted to get off so bad. Fortunately, there was a slide. I stepped into the abyss, fell into the slide, whooshed down to the, to the bottom of the thing, and then you, you, you hit feet running. The slide kind of kicked me up and flew me up into the air, and, I, and I, my thought was, oh, my God, I'm going to survive this whole thing, and I'm going to get wiped out here on the evacuation because it just really threw me. And I landed and scraped up my legs pretty badly, and landed on my feet, and it wasn't until that moment that I had the sense of, I'm here, I'm okay, I'm on the ground. When we got all our switches off, I ran through the airplane, made sure there was no one else on the airplane, came up to the door one left, and went down the slide, and I came around the front, and I saw that humongous hole in the side, and I just couldn't believe it. By the grace of God, we made it, and uh, it was a, a, an awesome experience. I, I would never want to go through that again. It was crazy, it was wild, it was scary, all at the same time. Um, I just thought that that was the end, that we were going to die. I mean, it, it, that was my first thought, 
that this is the end. But for the families of the nine people who were killed, the ordeal was only beginning. Kevin and Susan Campbell's son Lee had been flying home. About three o'clock in the afternoon, I think they said that uh, there was no New Zealanders involved, but we just knew that, that it, it was Lee. And then about, I suppose, a quarter of an hour later, we got a phone call from Chicago and they just said that they, they regret to inform us that our son was missing, presumed dead. And I guess about another hour after that, a policeman arrived at the door and he took one look at us and he says, I can see that you've had the news. So um, it was just, just an awful, awful day. And uh, it certainly didn't get much better for a long, long time. Although Lee's body had not been recovered, the Campbells flew straight to the wrecked aircraft in Honolulu. Your initial feeling is that you want to be as close to the spot where your relative died, um, and that was the aircraft, so we had to immediately go in and see the aircraft. The damage inside was horrific, just a total mess. And the hole in the side of the aircraft was much bigger than I had thought it would be, even though we had seen television newsreel reports. And it was so sad to get in and actually see where Lee's seat had been. The legs of the seat were still there. There was a good bit of fuselage beside him and still a window. But the Campbell's desire to find the cause of Lee's death inevitably brought them face to face with dreadful details. They took us to the medical examiner's office as well um, because they had found body parts and, and that sort of thing. So um, they didn't actually show us the body parts but they showed us bits and pieces that they had recovered from the engines and um, we got the medical examiner's report on what they had recovered. So, um, you know, we really would have preferred that it was Lee that went through the engine because it would have been an immediate death, whereas it was a four-minute fall down to the ocean, and we know that the people could have been alive as they were falling. And when you think about that, that's just horrific. As it became clear that their son's body would never be found, the Campbell's need to find the cause of the accident that killed him grew stronger. Lee can't have died for nothing. You know, you've got to find out why he died, and you've just got to make sure that uh, it never happens again. The Campbells embarked on a relentless personal investigation that would last nearly two years. The loss of their son meant they would stop at nothing to uncover the truth. The engines number three and four Two months after the accident on Flight 811, when the National Transportation Safety Board held preliminary hearings, the Campbells made sure they were there. But they soon grew frustrated. The NTSB would not complete its report for months, so the Campbells took matters into their own hands. We certainly weren't going to leave it to the, the NTSB to, to come up with the findings. We were going to follow through. And when the hearings ended, they had said that we could take whatever we wanted off the press table. And Susan walked up to the top table and yelled out, there's a, a really good set up here. So I uh, grabbed a box and loaded in all of the, the documents that we could find up there. Kevin's the most honest of people I know, but here he was taking something that we hadn't specifically been told we could take. And we're heading out the door just as the NTSB were arriving back in with the trolley to, to pick up all their documents. So we were out the door and into a taxi and gone. So we quickly realised we'd got a really good set of papers with a lot of things that hadn't been released to the public. We were able to really start our investigation in earnest at that stage. The unpublished documents revealed a disturbing catalogue of problems with the forward cargo door, going right back to its original design.